5.4, solving rational equations. So we're going to follow along with some examples and get into some of the crazy word problems that the textbook tries to create to make it, I don't know what they're trying to do with them, but the, the one if you read in your textbook, the very first one, it sounds really confusing when really it isn't. So let's see if we can uh, straighten up those couple of different types of word problems that you might see on a test and that you should be able to, to do. So the first one we're going to look at is a couple of examples. Some of these are from um, your textbook homework equation, equations, problems, right? And um, basically they're just saying, um, we'll start with the easiest one here. It says, if x plus 3 over x minus 1 is equal to 0, what is x going to be equal to? So you know from working with rational expressions, <coughs> sorry, that in order for, um, this is like finding the zeros of a function, right, or the x-intercepts, and you look to the numerator. So because this, all, you know, you'd say, well, this has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, what makes the numerator 0? Well, negative 3, and that is the answer. So the answer is x equals negative 3, as easy as that. In the second example, however, we don't have a set equal to 0. So you can't just say, oh, um, let's just move this over here, or let's just solve for the numerator equal to 2. No, 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 no. But what you can do is put this over a 1. And because it's over 1 and we have a nice um, setup here of just two ratios being equal to another, we can simply cross multiply. So I'm going to do x plus 3 times 1 and x minus 1 times 2, bring everything to one side, set it to 0, solve. Okay, so here we go x plus 3 equals 2x minus 2. I'm going to bring the variable over here because this one's bigger and I want it to be positive. So that's going to give me x when I bring this over here and I bring this over here and I get 5. So x is equal to 5. So you can double check that, plug it in here. 5 plus 3 is 8 over 4 equals 2. Yay, we're right. How easy was that one? Okay, this one just a little bit harder, um, minus 2, but again, we can simply cross multiply this to solve for x. So you're just going to do minus 2 times all of this, and this one times all of this. So that gives me what? Minus 2x minus 2 equals x squared minus 9x plus 8. Now you bring everything to one side. I'm going to leave the x squared here. x squared minus 9x plus 2x plus 8 plus 2 equals 0. So basically what I did was I just brought this stuff over here so I could keep my x squared positive. So now I have x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. And now you're into a simple factoring question. I multiplies to 10, that's to negative 7, and you should say x minus 5 times x minus 2. I think we have a little bit of vibration going on here. Let me just move this just a touch so it's not touching the table as I write. Okay, so that's equal to 0, so x is going to be equal to 2 or 5. Done. Okay, now the next question, just a little bit harder again, we have 3 over x plus 4 over x plus 1 is equal to 2. So now we can't cross multiply, obviously, because we don't have it set up like this, right? These were easy. This one's harder. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to use your simple little thing called a common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to bring the 2 over to this side because I want it set equal to 0. So I'll, I'll write that out first even though it's probably not necessary for you to see this. It's easy enough to figure that out. And now I need to know what the common denominator is. And so to do that, I'm just going to make x times x plus 1 the denominator. So I can put it all over it like this, right? So I have x times x plus 1. And what do I have to multiply this by to get this denominator? Well, x plus 1. So I have 3 times x plus 1. Plus 4. Well, it has the x plus 1, but it doesn't have x. And my minus 2. Oh, I better 
give more space here to this. Minus two, minus two doesn't have, it only has a one in the denominator, so I need to multiply it by x and x plus one. And now that's set equal to zero, and I can easily expand, simplify, factor, or use a quadratic formula if you have to, to solve for x. Let's do it quickly. So we have 3x plus 3 plus 4x, x, and we have minus 2x squared, and that would have been minus 2x equals 0, and that gives me minus 2x squared. How many x do I have? 3, 4, 7, minus 2 is 5, and I just have one constant plus 3 equals 0. I don't like the negative, so I'm going to divide by negative 1 off the page, almost, right? Let me show, slide it up here. So I have 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is equal to 0, and I'm looking for a product of minus 6 and a sum of minus 5, and that would be minus 6 and 1, and I put them over the front number here, which is a 2. I reduce my fraction and there's my answers right here. So I have 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. So 2x plus 1, x minus 3. If you're still having trouble factoring, go back to the grade 11 course and um, there are some exercises on factoring. So what does that give me my answers to be? Well, what makes these zero? Um, you're gonna say, oh, what happened to this? Well, I multiply both sides by it and zero times anything gives me just zero. So you don't need this once you've found the common denominator for every part of it, okay? So I get x equals minus one half and three. And you can check that back in the beginning here. If I put in three, I would have one plus one equals two, just like that. And if you put a negative a half, you'll see that also works as well. Okay, so let's move on to, there's two word problems I want to at least set up for you that you're going to encounter in your homework because there's not a lot of word problems here, but they, um, they try to make them kind of interesting. And I'm going to do number 11. I'm going to set it up, number 11, and it says, if you don't have the book, it says Taylor, Taylor purchased a large box of comic books for $300. So I'm going to put my $300 here. Um, she gave 15 of the comic books to her brother and sold the rest on the internet for $330. So sold for $330, making a profit of $1.50 on each one. $1.50 profit. And the question is, how many comic books were in the box? What was the original price of each comic book? Okay, so number of comic books. Okay, so we don't know. We need to figure that out. And we know two things. She bought them for $300, large box for $300. So the price for each comic book would be 300 over X, where X is the number of comic books. So you should have a let statement. Let X represent the number of comic books. Okay, so we've defined X as the number of comic books. She sold them on the internet for $330, but she gave 15 of them to her brother first. So we can't divide that by X. Now what you have to think of here is the profit, the profit down here was $1.50, right? So something minus something gives me this profit. So the price that she paid for them was the less price per comic book, right? Because she made a profit. So the 330 comic books that she's dividing by X minus 15, because she gave 15 to her brother, right? So 330 divided by that and subtract 300 divided by X is going to give you $1.50. So this is the price per comic book, per, I'll put it CB, sold. And this is the price per comic book purchased. And down here is the profit per 
comic book. Sorry about all the shadows. This is really not good lighting. Okay, so that's your setup. The rest of it is just basic calculation. You need to find a common denominator. Don't forget that. So you're going to bring this to the other side of the equation. Make a common denominator like we did in the last example of x minus 15 times x. And then um, that will be set to zero. And then you can do just like we did in the last question. Solve for the numerator set to zero. You might need to use quadratic formula if you can't uh, factor it easily. Okay, so that's, that's like a unit price. Like what was the profit? So the other type of question is like the one they did at the beginning of the uh, chapter, if you read it, and it was about somebody, how long, if somebody goes this fast and somebody goes this fast, how fast can they sell something else? So let's take a look at, um, which one do we do? Let's do number 10, the Turtle Dove Chocolate Factory. I'll call it number 10 here for you. The Turtle Dove Chocolate Factory has two chocolate machines. Machine A takes S minutes to fill a case with chocolates and machine B takes S plus 10 minutes to fill a case. Working together, the two machines take 15 minutes to fill a case. Approximately how long does it take to each machine to fill a case? So you're trying to figure out each of the machine. So machine A, I call it machine A, takes one over S boxes per minute per minute. And machine B takes 1 over S plus 10 boxes per minute. So we're looking at a, a per minute filling rate here. So machine A, 1 in S, the, the time is S, and this is S plus 10. So the two of them together, 1 over S plus 1 over S plus 10, has to be equal to 1 over 15. So because it said that the 15 minutes, now let me go back to the question. Um, it says it takes 15 minutes working together. They fill one box in, um, in 15 minutes or a case. Yeah, working together, the two machines take 15 minutes to fill a case. So this is machine A. It's not boxes per minute. I'm sorry, this was all cases. Cases per minute. Doesn't really matter, but... And that's your equation. So again, all you have to do is bring this to the other side of the equation. Let's just um, do a little bit of it here. So if I want to make a common denominator and set it equal to zero, I'm going to use S times S plus 10 times 15. Okay, so 15 S s plus 10. Now this one already has the s, so I have to multiply it by these two. So it's going to be 1 times 15 times s plus 10. The second one is going to be s times 15, because it already has this one. So that's just 15 s. And this one that we're bringing over, which means we have to change the sign to minus, it's going to be all of these, right? 15 times s times s plus 10. Okay, so again, I'm not going to finish this for you. I just wanted to show you how those two questions, um, they're really the only kind of questions you can kind of set up using rational equations. So if you understand the, the per minute idea, or um, what was the other one in your textbook? It wasn't per minute. It was you know, Stuart and Lucy making deliveries in fractions of a minute. So those are the only two questions that kind of show up in this type of word problems for it. Okay, hope that helps you out. And um, please subscribe, um, give me a thumbs up, make, leave a comment, promise to get back to you. All the best.